our, our title for tonight is civil disobedience. I want you to drop that in the comments, right? Civil disobedience, civil disobedience, and maybe even in all caps, right? Civil disobedience. So as a believer, as a believer, our faith should always come before our race. I know that is a very bold statement, but our faith should always come before our race. What are you saying, Pastor Ty? My skin complexion doesn't matter. What are you saying, Pastor Ty? It's okay what they're doing concerning racism or prejudice. What are you saying, Pastor Ty, that we should not protest and, and, and speak out about the, 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 our human rights being violated? Absolutely not. Hear me very clearly tonight that just as, and I'm going to use a word that he used, vigorous, just as vigorous, just as passionate, um, just as crazy, just as bold as you are about fighting for your skin tone, we need to be just as bold about fighting for Christ Jesus. Yeah. I know if we had a room full of people, I probably would have got maybe like one or two claps or maybe a couple snaps on that part because that's not too popular. Just as bold as you are about taking it to the streets and protesting, maybe even rioting with violent protests about your basic human rights, we have to be just as bold. No, I'm not saying that we necessarily have to pick one. All right, should I fight for, for my human rights or should I fight for my religious rights? It's, it's all the same, but this is what I'm saying. It bothers me when I see situations where people are more bold, more outspoken, um, 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 more willing to be persecuted for the color of their skin than they are for their faith. Right. Uh, people would be more willing to die for the color of their skin than they would be for what they believe than the person that they are in love with being Jesus Christ, God himself. This is what I'm saying. I want to show you in the scripture civil disobedience. I want to show you in the scripture how important it is that we are practicing holy boldness, that we are standing up for what we believe as Christians as believers, as disciples, as followers of Christ, and just how very important this is. Yes, it is just as important as fighting for our race, as fighting for our color. Me being a black man, I am the main target, <laughs> right? And so, so please understand what I'm saying tonight, but you also have to understand that when your faith comes before your race, when God, if you strip away our color, if you strip away everything else and we're left with just what we believe, right? All right, let me, let, let me show this to you in Acts, Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 14. As you're turning there, in Acts, they had a system. They had a system that was set up for the lawmakers, for the Pharisees, for the Sadducees, for all of them to have their biased views adopted by the, the general public. Right. And anything that went against um, anything that went against their views, anything that went against their bias, anything that went against their thoughts, which which these laws were being created in groups behind closed doors. Right. Government. Right. Politics. There was systems set up to benefit those creating the laws. Right. And so in Acts chapter 14. This is what it says. Y'all follow me on this. Y'all follow me. Watch this. In Acts 14, it says, Now it happened in Iconium that they went together into the synagogue of the Jews, so, so spoke that a great multitude, both the Jews and the Greeks, believed. This is Paul, the disciples, and the church. Like, they're, they're going around preaching. This is the book of Acts. People are getting healed everywhere they go. People are getting delivered. The church is growing by the hundreds and thousands daily. Um, they're seeing miracles, signs, and wonders all over the place. They're recruiting. People are being converted. And what's happening? The system that has been created is being disturbed, right? Y'all follow me on this. In, in verse 2, Acts 14, verse 2, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. The Gentiles was who Paul was sent there for. The Gentiles were uh, the people who some of the church didn't all the way agree with because they were like, you are not the called of God. You're not the chosen people. And so you shouldn't be saved. But Paul said, no, I need to preach not only to the church, 
but I'm called to the streets too. So Paul, Paul went here to preach to the streets. He, he went there to preach to a people who were oppressed. He went there to preach to a minority group. He went there to preach to a people who, uh, who was living under a system that had them bound and would not want, did not want to let them go. Y'all hear me on this. This is how important, this is how important our holy boldness is. In verse two, it says that, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Basically, they turned them against the very people that was trying to deliver them out of oppression. And it says in verse three, therefore, they stayed there a long time speaking. I love this word boldly in the Lord who was bearing witness of the word to his grace. Look, this is what he said. Instead of running from it. They embraced it and went after it. They, uh, you know, and like, so, so some of us, you know, we'll, 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 we'll kind of do half of what God told us to do. He'll tell us to do something. We'll go, we'll do it. And then nothing happens. And then we'll say, well, I did what God told me to do. And so let me just go about my business or you'll do what God told you to do. And then met with opposition, you'll retreat. They go into Iconium to preach, to deliver the Gentiles, right? Already knowing that they're being persecuted. Peter and John in the previous chapters, as we talked about last week, they've already been arrested and beaten and their life continuing to be threatened because they're preaching the gospel. We already talked about Stephen, who has already been stoned in public, and it was okay. It was publicly accepted because he was preaching the gospel. We put this in context. Now, Paul is trying to deliver a people that's under the power of the government oppression. And instead of leaving and fleeing after he tried to deliver them, it says that he stayed longer. He stayed longer because he saw that there was a need. Y'all, this is how important our holy boldness is. And this ties into everything that we're experiencing with our world, with, 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 with civil unrest, right? It ties into everything. This is how important the believer is. This is how important your faith is. This is how important it is for you to not just be a sideline Christian, but for you to jump in the game and to become a disciple, to be able to share your faith. This is how important it is. In verse five, and when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews, y'all listen, a violent attempt was made by the Jews, but also by the Gentiles, the very people that they're trying to deliver. A violent attempt was made by the Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them. They became aware and they fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconium, to the surrounding region. This is where they did. They fleed, but they fleed continuing to preach. And they were preaching the gospel there. They continued to preach. That didn't stop them. Their lives were spared, but they continued to preach. Follow me on this. This, this message tonight is not going to be long, but I need y'all to hear this. You keep on going down. They heal a couple people while they're in that city. They start stirring up trouble because, the, again, again, the laws that were created, the system that was created to keep them down, right? Now they're disturbing the peace, not with violence, not with violence. They're exercising what should be their human rights. They're exercising what should be, what should be their basic law, what should be, what should be which should be the bare minimal right for them to be able to share their religious beliefs. This is what they're doing. And then we get down to, let's see. Let's see where we want to go. In verse 19, chapter 14, 19, this is what it says. Then the Jews from Antioch and Iconium, the place that they just fled from, they came there. They now found where they are because they're still disrupting the peace everywhere where they're going. So they they chased after them. They found them there. And having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul, dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Y'all, this 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 thing right here got me this this right here got me because Paul is doing he's, he's just simply being obedient. He's being obedient to what God told him to do. But his obedience to doing what God told him to do got him stoned. Right. Civil disobedience. Let me help you all understand. OK, well, what does that mean, Pastor? What, 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 is, what, is, what, is, what is what is civil disobedience? Civil disobedience is the refusal to comply with certain laws as a peaceful form 
of a political protest, right? You're refusing to reply with certain laws that are unfair, certain laws that violate your human rights, certain laws that violate your basic, your basic human needs or religious belief, right? This is what this, this is what Paul is doing. He's preaching the gospel and this violates what he believes. And so he is he he's he's practicing civil disobedience by saying, I'm going to peacefully protest, but you're going to know that I'm here. And you're going to understand that what I am pre you're going to get the point. And I'm not going to leave until you get it. He was just as bold as we are about busting out windows, just as bold as we are about, you know, going up to the police stations and voicing our opinion, just as just as bold as we are to take into the streets. Rioting, protesting, screaming, having, you know, arguments and wars all over social media, just as bold as you are about all of that concerning the color of your skin. How much more important is your spirit? Essentially, what Paul is saying is. This right here. I'm going to disturb the peace. But I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to be obedient to what God told me to do, even though that means that I'm going to be disobedient to the laws of oppression. It's similar. I think about I consider um, I consider the story of the three Hebrew boys when they were when they were thrown into the lion's den. I mean, when they were thrown into the fire, I apologize. Daniel actually was in the same situation when when I think about the three Hebrew boys. The reason they were thrown in the fire was because they refused to bow. Right. There was a system. And they said, when, when the music plays, you have to bow down. Y'all listen right here. Y'all listen right here because I believe that this is going to help a lot of people. This one thing might help a whole lot of people right here. All right, well, pastor, where do I draw the line? Because the Bible talks about, you know, obey the, ball, the, 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 the laws of the land. But I also understand that some of the laws are set up to oppress people who are obedient to God. So where do I draw the line? And that story in the gospel is 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 a perfect example where it talks about the three Hebrew boys. Where you draw the line is, does this conflict with my faith? Does what I am about to go out into the streets and do conflict with everything that I believe? When I consider the word of God, and this is the thing that I align my life with, this is the infallible word of God. And that's if you believe that it's the infallible word of God. If you don't, then I can't persuade you. But if you believe that the word of God is infallible, if you believe that this is the final authority over your lives, if you live by the word of God, then you have to consider is what I'm about to do. Does this align with the word of God is what the government is forcing me to do? Does this go against my religious beliefs? Does this go against my relationship with God, with what they're trying to um, with what they're trying to implement? Is this something that is going to help my relationship with God or is this something that is going to try to oppress me or push me into a circle to, to have me to close my mouth, not to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's where you make that dividing line where you say, nope, I can't do it because I will not stop in sharing the gospel. Right. If you're going to be just as vigorous, you're going to be just as bold. If you're going to be just as passionate about anything else dealing with your skin color, then you have to be just as bold, if not even more about your spirit. This is what it says. Paul gets stoned for what he believes. They leave him for dead. Civil disobedience. We might say, well, pastor, I, I understand civil disobedience and how it relates to us being Christians and, you know, peaceful protesting and uh, sharing our faith and not going to, you know, not allowing the laws to, you know, dictate how we respond or act as Christians. But that's all politics. I don't really like getting into politics. Well, this is this is politics, y'all. Politics is simply relating to government decisions. They are group. They're 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 there are decisions that are made by groups, by parties, um, by individuals relating to your everyday affairs. Not necessarily theirs. The laws that they implement are relating to your everyday affairs. They're relating to your public affairs. They're relating to who gets power, how much power they get, how much money they get, how much they can spend, how much is too much, where they can live, what basic rights should we honor and who should deserve those basic rights. That's politics. That is politics. Politics happens in the church. 
sad to say. That's politics, right? And so we're talking about civil disobedience. The disciples, even Paul himself, he understood politics. He understood that behind closed doors, they were creating a system that would oppress the believer. So they stoned him. They stoned him, left him for dead. This is what happened in verse 20. However, however, story doesn't end there. That's not how Paul died in the, in the Bible. So what happened? However, when the disciples gathered around him, that could be a whole other message by itself about accountability, about prayer partners, about surrounding yourself with people that believe in you and ain't about to let you die. That's a whole other message. I'm going to leave that for somebody else to preach. It said, however, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up, went into the city, and the next day departed with Barnabas to Derby. Wait a minute. Derby is the city that you just got chased out of. This man got stoned in public, dragged out of the city, left for dead, and then went back to the city that just threw him out. If you keep reading in the next verse, it says, when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch. Y'all, this is incredible to me. We're going to tie it in. I'm going I'm to finish on this note. This is incredible, incredible to me. He just got stoned. A lot of us, we, we'd be willing to get beat up for, uh, for, for, for civil rights. We'd be willing to be pepper sprayed, to be arrested, to be sprayed with water hoses, to have police dogs sick on us, um, to, 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 for us to go out and to be openly uh, persecuted, publicly ridiculed. We, we, we welcome that. And we, 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 we take in, we receive, we embrace that energy because then we, we, uh, we, we, we give it back out in a sense of power and passion and energy that we put back into it to see change in our communities. Again, if you're going to be this passionate and this convicted about your natural body and about your natural skin tone, how much more should we be convicted and passionate and willing to be persecuted for righteousness sake. This is where I tie it, all, tie, it all, tie it all in. And I'll end on this note right here. This is why I tie it all in. This is how important holy boldness is. This is how important. It is very important. This is how important it is. In verse 21, they re returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. 22, it says, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying... We must go through many tribulations and enter the kingdom of God. If you scroll down to verse 21 to verse 27, this is the key part right here, because this is what happens when we exercise holy boldness and we're unashamed, unapologetic, and we are able to preach the gospel without fear of persecution. This is what happens. Remember, I told you about the Gentiles who was under the systematic oppression. This is what it says in verse 27. Now, when they had come, gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Y'all hear this and somebody probably got it the first time, but I'm gonna read this again. This is what it says. Now, when they had come, now, when they had come, gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and all, um, all that God had done with them, that he had opened the door of faith for the Gentiles. Y'all see this? A generational curse was broken. Not just a generation, generations of curses, generations of bondage, generations of, of them being, being, being pounded on, being beaten on, them not being able to voice their faith because them being under a systematic rule, a set of laws created by people behind doors that had their best intentions in mind and not the intentions of those that would have to live by them. And as a result of Paul taking a stand and being stoned in public and then going back out and preaching as a result of Paul's holy boldness, he ended up shattering a generational curse. He ended up going into the strong man's house and taking out the captive so that he could then be free. He ended up going to a people that was oppressed, 
that was oppressed and pulling them out of that oppression, not only pulling them out of that, that oppression, but now they are able to walk in the faith. Now they are able also to preach the gospel freely without condemnation. Y'all see this? As a result of Paul's boldness, as a result of his obedience, as a result of his consistency, as a result of his discipline, God, this is what you told me to do. I'm going to do it. I don't see the results that I was expecting from my obedience. I'm being persecuted by the people that you have sent me to. They are ready to kill me for what you told me to do. But yet and still, I can imagine Paul's probably thinking in his mind, for Christ, I'll live. For Christ, I will die. Living a life that is devoted to Christ. Living a life for Christ that is more passionate about him than it is about any other thing. And this ain't even a thing about comparison of race and faith. It's, it's, it's not even that. It is that your faith is number one and nothing else is even close Number two, nothing is even close in second place. Y'all know our mission for flowing life. Love God, love people. Love God first. When you love God with all of your heart, you will do anything for him and you would be willing to die for the person that you love. How many of you have a spouse, have a child, have a parent, have a best friend, somebody close to you and you would do anything for them? You would not dare sit back and watch somebody try to try to beat them up, jump them or stone them and you not do anything. You wouldn't dare see them in the hospital needing a kidney. You having an extra one and you not wanting to give it. Matter of fact, if you love them enough, you would almost want to even take their place so that they could be well. What are you saying, Pastor Ty? What I'm saying is when you fall in love with Christ. Jesus, it, pre it produces a holy boldness in you so much so that you say, hey, whoever's oppressed, I want to see them come out. Whoever's bound, I want to see them come out. I want to, I want, God, I want you to break my heart for the things that break yours. I want to have compassion for the areas that you have compassion. When your heart is being broken because you see people that are bound, I want to be stirred up with compassion to go to those places. When you see a third world country that is being oppressed, God, stir me up with conviction so that I might be the person that you send. Even the word of God says, well, who shall I send? God, send me. I'll go wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to say, whatever you want me to do. But I won't stop there. Even once I go and I see that the situation is not favorable for what I am used to, for what I'm accustomed to, for, for, for what is comfortable to, what, to my natural um, um, living arrangements. All right, that, that, I, I don't even care anymore. I want your will to be accomplished in my life. And there's somebody on the other side of your obedience, on the other side of your holy boldness, just like we saw in this passage, there's somebody waiting for you to speak up. There's somebody waiting for you to take the, the, the mountain that's been in front of you for, for you to climb that thing. There's somebody waiting for you to, to, to look that fear in the eye and say, I'm not scared of you anymore. Matter of fact, I, I, I love God so much that fear can't even do anything to me. Matter of fact, I want to see somebody free so bad that I don't care how much I have to go through in order to get them free. Matter of fact, I want it more than they want it even for themselves. Paul wanted to see a people receive Christ so bad that he was willing to risk his life just to, as verse 27 says, for the door of faith to be opened to a people who couldn't get it before. That's all I desire, y'all, and that's all I'm saying. On the other side of your holy boldness, there's a door that is waiting to be opened, and on the other side of that door lies people who are held captive. People who have been bound for years, people who are strapped down by generational curses, people who are strapped down by unforgiveness and bitterness, people who are weighed down, heavily weighted by the weights of the world or sickness or disease or virus, mental health issues or emotional issues, waiting on the other side of that door for somebody to be bold enough to take out the strong man that has been holding them captive. Is there one? 
Is there anybody that's streaming tonight, somebody maybe even watching on a later date, that you have that boldness? You have that tenacity. You have that fire. Just like Jesus came after Peter and he said, hey, now I want to use you to still fish, but I want to change the way that you fish. I still want to use that same knowledge, that same understanding, that same vigor, that same passion that you had for fishing, but now I want to channel that into another avenue to fish for men. For you, that person who says, man, you know what? I'm that person that's ignorant. I'm that person that's going to go out into the street and going to bang out some windows. I'm that person that's ready to get into a fight if somebody calls me out of my name. I'm that person that's ready to climb up the hill and go and go speak face to face with the decision makers and tell them to their face the things that they need to change. Keep that vigor. Keep that passion. Keep it because that's what we need for the kingdom of God. Paul was killing the Christians. When Paul was converted... His passion didn't change. He still had the same passion to pursue, except now he was pursuing the oppressor. Now he was pursuing the strong man. Now he was pursuing the enemy. And he went just as hard for God. And I'd argue that he went even harder for God than he did when he was killing Christians himself. That's all I'm asking y'all tonight. We'll finish on that note. I want to encourage you. I want to light a fire on the inside of you or under you if I need to. I want to inspire you. I want to push you to begin to walk in holy boldness, to begin to be bold in your faith, to begin to be bold in what you believe, to to begin to be bold in the scripture. All right, God, this this is who I am. This is what your word says about me. I don't care what anybody else says about me. I'm confident in what your word says about me. I'm confident in what you've spoken. I'm confident that you're with me. I'm confident that you're covering me. I'm confident that you're protecting me. I'm confident that you can heal my body. I'm confident that you can restore my mind. I'm confident because I trust you, because I believe you. And I'll be bold in that declaration regardless of who likes it and who thinks what about it. And any condemnation or persecution that might come my way as a result of what I believe. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for y'all tonight before we finish up. Thank you, God. I want to pray for each one of you for holy boldness. And that might not be the word that you pick for yourself. For you, you might say, God, I need I need conviction. God, stir up in me passion. Whatever your word is. I want to pray for you tonight. God, give me a fire on the inside that that doesn't go out every time somebody talks about me, that goes out every time somebody says they doesn't like me, that goes out, you know, when whenever I don't get the response that I was looking for. Give me a fire that can't be snuffed out. Let it be like a burning bush that's not consumed, one that can't be snuffed out. If that's you, I want to pray for you tonight. Father, I thank you for each individual streaming tonight, each individual under the sound of my voice, each individual that may be even watching this at a later date. God, I thank you that even right now you will begin to stir up a fire on the inside of them. And maybe some streaming tonight, they already got that fire going and it's been going for a long time. Father, but I pray that you will fan that thing into flames, that you will cause it to be like a wildfire out of control, that you would cause that thing to be like a wildfire out of control, that you would cause that thing to be like a wildfire out of control, even beyond their own control, that they'll begin to speak, that they'll begin to speak with boldness even beyond their comfort zone. That they'll begin to speak and declare your word even beyond what they're used to. That they'll begin to speak your word even beyond what they thought they they would ever do. To stand on platforms that they said that they would never mount. To do things that they said that they would never do. To go places they said that they would never go. To speak to people that they've been afraid to speak to. But to declare the word of the Lord. So that those who have been oppressed, who have been cursed, who have been bound for years, as long as they can remember, can now go free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for an army of militant believers that you are raising up, not just in flowing life. I realize that you're doing it here. You're doing something special here right now. But I recognize that, the, that, 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 the, that your reach is beyond us. I thank you for an army 
a militant group of believers that will stand firm on your word, flat footed and boldly declare the word of God, that you're raising up an army of disciples that will go ye thereforth and preach the gospel at all costs to all nations. Now I ain't call you a pastor. Now I ain't say you was a deacon. I ain't call you an apostle or a prophet. I said to preach, which just simply means to boldly declare the good news. All of us are preachers. All of us are ministers of reconciliation. There's no excuse and there's no way around it. I am talking to you tonight. Give them boldness, Lord, to boldly declare your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.